you. Let's do the presentation. So presentation is limited to maximum 10 minutes. Yeah, followed by question and answer about five minutes maximum from the other group as well as from myself. Let's just start with group one. So group one is Ezra Angeli, yes, I believe. Yeah, Angeli and Ezra. Okay, sir. Okay, so please share your screen. Let me allow participant to share screen. Yeah, you may share already your screen. Is there on your video also? Okay. okay, yes. Angeli. Okay. Um, so I will start the presentation. Good morning, sir. Good morning, friends. Today, Ezra and I will present about our second milestone of our project about PCR. Next. A short background. Um, quantitative PCR is right now the most preferred COVID diagnostic tool. It relies on PCR process, which consists of three steps, denaturation, annealing, and extension. Because each of these processes require quite high temperature, the PCR tool must be able to withstand this high, this high temperature that is also changing. And right now, the most widely used tool is thermocycler. However, it is expensive and complex. Due to that, we propose a device that is low cost and practical. It is fabric based and microfluidic, thus only requires a small amount of sample. And the heating element and sensor is based on CNT coated thread with nichrome wire as an alternative heating element. Next. So, uh, based on the previous research by the previous um, batch, we have concluded a few problems, which is the functionality of the chamber has never been tested, and the CNT sensor is inaccurate, possibly due to the lack of calibration. The CNT heater is also unable to reach desired temperature. It can only reach up to 75 degrees Celsius before it combusts. And nichrome wire as an alternative heating was also unable to accommodate temperature change as it shows signs of smoke and burning when temperature is lower from 95 to 65 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> Based on these problems, we have summarized a few aims that we want to achieve in our project, which is the chamber design will be modified to optimize microfluidic properties. The CNT coated thread will also be calibrated and characterized before using it as a sensor. Then it will be sewed onto a piece of fabric to reduce fluctuation during the reading. And the CNT coated thread as heater for heater, the resistance will need to be lowered. So PVDF thread will be braided before it is coated with CNT several times. And nichrome wire will still be used as an alternative, but it will it will be coiled. And the jumper wires that is used with nichrome wire will also be replaced with thicker ones. Next. These are the list of equipment that we need. Um, next. <coughs> so, so now I will um, explain about the procedure that we will. Um, conducting so the first thing first is to create uh, the making the components which is like chambers and then sensors and also the heater and um, after that after it was done uh, we will test the components like by uh, testing the hydrophilic and the hydrophobic um, part of the chambers and also to calibrate and ca characterizing the sensors and testing the heaters and after it was done uh, it is done then uh, we will arrange the components we'll assembling it in the casing um so first i will discuss about the microfluidic chambers so uh, what 
we want to do is um, there are two plans. The first plant is uh, plan A. So uh, first we design the Adobe for, um, the chambers in Adobe uh, Photoshop software and then we printed it uh, with the vinyl paper and we cut the design with scissors manually and then um, so we also use interlock cotton fa uh, fabric um, as the substrate in the chambers so um, we will cut the uh, cotton tool the, which is similar to the design and then after that um, on the other hand we will mark one petri dish twice the first mark is for one millimeter above the base and the second is uh, two milli uh, second mark is two millimeter above the base um, and this petri dish is used as um, to combining the uh, epoxy solution um, with the ratio of one uh, and one ratio uh, to the uh, cotton fabric and um, uh, we have to wait it until 10 to 20 minutes and after that uh, we put um, the um, um, finished solution to the oven at 80 degrees celsius for one hour and after that we will uh, remove the excess uh, we will uh, pull out the solution in the petri dish and remove the excess and However, if the plan A didn't work well, so we have to change the uh, the ratio of the resin and the hardening part uh, with a 2.5 to 1 ratio. Um, and this ratio was taken uh, is taken from the previous study by Cheng et al. Um, so the previous study that we uh, hold to create the microfluidic chambers is two uh, papers. The first one is from Cheng L and the second one is from the previous uh, seniors, which is uh, Chi, uh, Diana and others. Um, so for Cheng L, uh, they create the um, um, epoxy resin combined with the P PDMS to create microfluidic chips and they explain the fabrications and how they uh, made it and they was uh, succeed about it so we want to follow that them too and then these are the uh, microfluidic chambers so before and i um we create the new design uh, of the microfluidic chambers uh, so the left one is um the full size which is uh, seven centimeter times seven centimeter Matter, but uh, the right side is when we uh, fold it and these are the videos short videos um, of the microfluidic chamber design so uh, we um, um, this is from paper base but I wa we want to create it uh, with the um, uh, cotton um, so when we fold it it become like this with the uh, uh, size uh, 3.5 centimeter times 3.5 centimeter and then next um, actually we already did um, the experiment um, to test the thickness of the layer that is needed in the uh, epoxy so I will skip it because um, as the result um, we need three layers um, of epoxy resin to make it hydrophobic to the water so the C is the testing equipment, uh, I use water, and B is the diffusion test um, with three layers. And then next is, um, Angeli will explain a bit about it. Okay, so for the CNT coated thread essential, first of all, the thread will be sewed on a fabric in a zigzag pattern to reduce movement or fluctuation during the reading and to increase length of sensor. The length of each zigzag pattern will be 0.5 centimeters. And before it is used as a sensor, it will be calibrated and characterized first. The making of this anti coated thread will be based on a previous study by one of our seniors, which is Kaelga and others. And next, um, for calibration of LM35 sensor, that will later be used to characterize the to characterize our sensor, it is based on NTC thermistor as a standard. So it is uh, calibrated with the help of Arduino and arranged in a circuit like in figure five. However, the LM, since this is a 
a simulation by Tinkercad when in reality um, the NPC thermistor will be connected in a voltage divider circuit like the picture in figure six. Next. Um, for the NPC thermistor, as I said um, before, it uses voltage divider circuit because the Arduino measures voltage at the point between the thermistor and the known resistor, which is R1. And then using voltage divider, R2 is obtained, which is then applied to Steinhardt Hart equation, um, which is useful to convert the resistance of the thermistor, which is the NPC, to read the temperature. So these two formulas will be applied in the coding. Next. So this is the coding for the calibration. Basically, it reads the data from both the LM35 sensor and the NTC thermistor. And after we see if it is um, how it is different or how similar it is, then we adjust the value of the 150 here, which is circled. It is simply a placeholder to represent the value needed to make the two readings the same, which is the LM35 will be adjusted to match the reading from NPC thermistor. Next. For the characterization of CNT thread sensor, it will be done in a Peltier cold box, which will set the temperature. And then the resistance of the thread will be measured by ohmmeter in the Arduino and the LM35 sensor will measure the temperature. The circuit is seen in figure eight where R2 represents unknown resistor, R1 represents the unknown resistor which is the thread and the LM35 will detect the, will read the temperature. Next. Um, this is for the coding in Arduino, and the output is also simulated using Tinkercad, where, where, where it will read the R2, which is the resistance of the thread. Next. Um, for CNT coated thread as heater, it is also based on the study by Kaelga, and uh, to, to use it optimally as a heater, the resistance needs to be the words so we use the method where the PVDF fiber is braided before it is coated with CNT. Why it is braided? It is to increase the absorption of CNT onto the fiber, and then the braided thread will be dipped in CNT solution and then dried in an oven. After it is done, the resistance will be measured. If it is still too big, then the dip it will be dipped in coated in CNT again until the resistance of pain is lower than one kilo ohm. Next. For the nichrome wire as an alternate heater, the nichrome wire in our project will, will be coiled to increase the length and the resistance so that the, the jumper wire will not be melt, will not melt when it reaches high temperature. To coil, we do it manually by using pliers and with chopsticks and the Aside from coiling, the jumper wires will also be changed to thicker ones. So this uh, is the circuit design that is similar to the previous study. Uh, please make it and a also, bit quicker yeah, yeah. because of time. Okay. And also, uh, we also use the same um, code uh, for the Arduino as the previous study. So this is the plan work for um, our team. So um, the first thing is we want to make the um, microfluidic chambers in week uh, 12 to 13 and um, make the sensors and heater in week 13 until 14 and calibrating is also in week 13 and 14. And to make the uh, nichrome wire, we uh, have a goal to do it in week 14 and 15. And also for casing for PCR is week 14 and 15. And also to make the report, we uh, planning to do it um, from this week until uh, week 16. And then um, this is the budgeting for um, our project. So um, actually the detailed pro uh, budgeting is in the proposal. So um, uh, we 
uh, take 885,000 uh, rupiah. So these are the references that we have. So that's all from us. Thank you. Hey, thank you, uh, Anjali and Ezra. So please, uh, group two, please ask questions for group one, Andy and Chris. Um, itu yang to decrease the resistance, why should it be deep and dry? Gitu kayak, ya kenapa harus di deep dan dry biar resistance-nya decrease gitu. Um, so, um, based on previous study, when we deep and dry, uh, more CNT is, apa sih namanya? More CNT is absorbed in the thread and it will reduce the resistance. Why do you think it is it like that? Uh, well, the, because of the previous study, you mentioned previous study, yes, but how do you explain it? How do you explain from the uh, results of the previous study? Basically, uh, because the CN, because the CNT can, because the CNT can, yeah, because, because the CNT can withstand more, more, uh, because the CNT can withstand more heat. Yes, right. So, um, in my opinion, um, when we dip and dry it, um, the CNT will absorb to the um, to the fiber more, and it will create thicker layers. And because of the properties of the uh, CNT coated thread, which is um, it has high conductivity and others so it creates um less uh it creates smaller resistivity for the um the the thread like that okay andy any questions um um why why did you make the um the the coil the coil arrangement i mean like uh why don't you just uh make a different pattern i mean is it is it the best uh you is mean like this way? yes uh, uh, this one is it the best way <laughs> to improve the the nichrome wire as a heater um actually this is um one method that we think about because uh, while coiling it um it will increase the length the length and that will create um higher resistivity higher resistance like that so because um when um in the previous study the current is too big so um, that creates the jumper wire to burn. Mm -hmm. So um, we want to um, decrease the current. Uh, oh, the current. So yeah, that is one of the step that we want to um, make to try like that. OK, Andy. Yes, sir. Yeah, so we, yeah, why we make call is also that you can have longer length of wire at small area because without coiling, then it takes more area, right? To have a small the same length. Yeah, I have one single single question about PDF. Why you speak PDF? I said, did you mean cotton? Because we are using cotton thread, which is coated by the CNT. Why now we are trying to use PVDF? Um, so uh, based on literature study, actually PVDF and cotton is quite similar. However, it is um, PVDF have a low, is said to have a lower width density. So it is easier to break and it is also more flexible. Lower, no, PV, PVDF is used with polymer, right? It's a synthetic polymer. Yes. Yeah, Basically, it is also a piezoelectric material. 
Iya sih elektrik polymer if you remember from my memory. And if from the idea is basically to use to lower the resistance of the thread, right? Okay. To use it as a heater. I think the other part is the antiquated thread as a heater. And yeah, another slide which is at uh, this one, the other slide. Um, the next quoted thread as heater. As heater, not as uh, yeah. Okay. So you you mentioned PVDF fiber read it. Uh, if you are based on what Elga had made in 2019, it was basically she had decoded thread. The cotton thread, which is braided before dipping into the CNT solution, not PVDF. So where, where did you get this idea to use PVDF? Um, PVDF is based on the last year's paper from Chimaria. They use PVDF, but from whom? They use, huh? From whom? Paper um, from whom? Uh, Chimaria, the, the previous batch, sir. Maria, so really, I, I haven't heard that she tried to use PVDF. Yeah, uh, yeah they, they use PVDF, but the PVDF is also, is already, the PVDF they use is uh, the one available in the lab, which is already coated with CNT. So they, they did not um, do it from the from the fiber and then they coat it, but it is already coated the one that they use. But they Are you sure it is PVDF, not cutter? Yeah, PVDF. It's it, it's in the, their paper. It's PDF, but KLG's paper is cotton. So we also because we actually uh, last year Maria, right? In their what sensor and measurement or or uh, biomedical instrumentation? Uh, biomedical instrumentation. Biomedical instrumentation report. It is the the one you give. In the, the one that you gave us, yes. sir. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it is not PDF. Um, but I also read um, a paper that uh, PVDF fiber has uh, good properties because it um, actually, uh, to be honest, I kind of forget. But um, the, uh, when it compares to the cotton, um, the PVDF shows higher properties when it's combined to the uh, CNT thread. Um, you have to define more specifically what do you mean with higher properties here? Which properties are higher? Thermal, con thermal conductivity, resistance, what? Properties can be many, right? Yes, sir. Um, actually, I, I, I remember that I read this, but I ha uh, have to look okay. at the papers again. No, please please uh, have a look again, have a check again. Yeah? Do not, don't make a uh, wrong plan. Don't make, okay. please be meticulous. If possible, ask again, Maria. Yeah, uh, really check on with her. Because I, I'm, I was, I'm really sure that she didn't use PVD. To the best that I read, maybe I didn't read it, read her report carefully. But check again. But if, sir, if, if, when yes. I asked Kak Devita about PD, PVDF fibers and um, and the coated thread um, that is available in the uh apa namanya in the lab she said that uh yeah masih ada so we think that yeah maybe yeah. Uh, there are but, other I mean, is, is it, i think what they thought is pvdf is it really pvdf maybe it was actually cotton. a previous cotton thread made by elga okay. yeah braided because elga also made braided cotton thread deep with cnt maybe then they thought it were PVDF. well they never they never they never use real actual PVDF. So please be careful and check again. You have, and if they did use PVDF, why would PVDF be better as heater when it is coated CNT? You have to go to the to the first source of paper at mentioning it. Because I don't think that uh, Maria ever shown to me a real experimental proof that it is better than CNT coated. Okay, so your choice should be based on 
real experiment uh, experimental proof or otherwise as previous scientific report from literature okay sir okay please check it again okay, okay. thank you group thank you sir one thank let's you, sir. move forward to uh, group two group two andy and grace please and on your camera okay. Share your screen. Sudah, Andi, are you ready? Oh, ya, Andi. Andi is yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Traveling. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Pandeni um, and friends. Um, today, um, I and Andi will will be presenting about yes, our. Can, can you have the lighting on your face because? Wait, sir. It's a bad light, strong bad light from the window. Yeah, it will be better. Okay. Today we will be presenting about our second milestone, which is uh, which have the title "Contactless Temperature Sensor Based on CNT Coated Pet IR Absorber." So this is the contents of our presentation. Um, we will make it short for the introduction and basic principles, since they are already explained before in the in the first milestone, so they are yeah, similar. And there is also no um, budget and um, timeline because we want to make our presentation short. Um, Andy? So as for the introduction, um, fever is a common symptom of infection and a device uh, such as bolometer is needed to measure body temperature. like. When, when we have fever, the, but our body temperature will raise. And for this, uh, on the previous study, uh, we told that uh, it, is, it has been proved that CNT could serve as a thermistor, specifically the NTC type, which will be used as, the, as our sensor material. Next. Nggak bisa di nexin sebentar. Um, sorry. Ini error. I'll stop share for a while. Okay. Okay, um, so for the human body temperature, uh, IR that emitted by human body is around 10 microns and um, we, can, we could use Wien's law to, to prove the correlation of, um, uh, of the spectrum of radiation with uh, temperature. Uh, we can calculate the spectrum of radiation uh, from wind slow B, the wind slow displacement, which in here is 2.897729 times 10 to the power of 3 meter Kelvin, and divided by temperature, which is 310 Kelvin, it is around 37 degrees Celsius. For the thermistor, uh, so the thermistor. Uh, is uh, is a temperature dependent uh, resistor where when the temperature when the res resistance change uh, it is due to the temperature change and as I said as I've said before the CNT could serve as the NTC thermistor where NTC thermistor is uh, resistance inversely proportional to the temperature where uh, yeah so the formula below is the correlation of NTC thermistor with the body temperature next uh, so the device that we will make is the volumeter uh, it uses uh, the lens to transmit specific light to help our sensor to get a better result and the sensor we use the thermistor 
which is the resistive base sensor. Next. We can use the null measurement since if we use the standard measurements, it will have uncertainties, have they, they will provide um, uh, extra value on the value measured. So this is the Whitstone bridge. It is a type of null measurement. R1 uh, is served as the thermistor. From the upper formula, we can derive it to below formula. Next. Next, um, we will be um, discussing about the materials and fabrication. So um, basically, from the previous uh, experiment that had been done by Kak Cristo and the others, um, it could be seen from the result that um, the resistance produced are not re were not reliable, and also the um, reference resistance was um, uh, have uh, fluctuation. So yeah, therefore here are some of our modifications. First, uh, this is these are the tools and materials that uh, we need for our for our device. Um, Next is the fabric coating. So there will be for the fabric coating with the HBN with the boronitride. There will be two types. Uh, first, the is the HBN coated fabric, which had been done before also by Kakristo, and its fabrication will also be the same. And it has already been explained in the first milestone. So I'll just skip. And for the next one is the BNPVA coated fabric. Um, I I found this uh in a paper like uh, they said that this type of fabric uh, could absorb heat and then could dissipate heat outside um, of the uh, cloth. So yeah, we use this um, fabrication method. Um, we use this material. And its fabrication is quite similar to the HBN coated fabric. Next is the uh, stitching the thermistor. Um, the main arrangement is um, we, use, we also use the same as the previous one because yeah, it, it has it is proven that they produce uh, some resistance yeah but i think the uh, what makes uh, their results um, unreliable is uh, other other factors so yeah for this one we use the the same inner arrangement next is the fabrication of ag electrodes um the fabrication will be uh, uh, using the template method using vinyl paper yeah, so this is the electrodes template. Uh, this one here, the hole here, the rectangle one will, will be filled with AG paste. Um, why we use AG electrodes? Because yeah, in the previous study, there had been yeah some paper that used AG electrodes. So we want to evaluate whether it will be better using AG electrodes or only just uh, with the tray. Next is... So for the design of the thermal isolator, the casing, uh, we we try to improve it by uh, having a lower a lower height uh, from the first the lens and the sensor. Both. So we made two versions. The first version is quite similar to the previous uh, design, but we we just adjust the height while the second version we we try to improve it by making the lock design mechanism where uh, we don't have to glue it and uh, in between the top and bottom we, we have the place where we could uh, place the sensor so they are basically have the same uh, distance from the lens and the sensor yeah um i'll add a bit um, so basically, why we make the second version is because we we are worried that um, there could be a leakage when we just um, directly glue the like we sandwich the fabric. So yeah, we make it like this. This one we put it inside, and yeah, on the um, outer part we can just um, close the bolometer, and with the lock design we don't need to glue it again. And also for the Fresnel lens, yeah, we make uh, like a place here so that yeah. Hopefully there will be no leakage, so the um, condition inside could be vacuum to reduce the um, thermal convection. And the so this is the this is our design. The yellow part is the lens, 
uh, and uh, left the design with orange color is the first is the is our first version uh, and yeah the, the second one will be on the right the blue one and the green one yeah mm -hmm. and and we we made the place uh where uh, a hole for the vacuum and two holes for the jumper wire placed uh, on the top casing while the vacuum is on the bottom on on the bottom of the casing yeah um for the measurement um we will use um like the previous one but yeah the previous one haven't used the whetstone which because they basically just measure the resistance because of lack of time yeah um this has been explained before yeah uh, first, we get the thermistor resistance change, then it will be then be converted into voltage by Whetstone Bridge. So it acts as the um, primary transducer, then the voltage signal will be sent to the Arduino and will be processed. Then for, from the voltage, um, it will be converted to the thermistor resistance value with the uh, um, formula given before, and then the temperature will be obtained. Yeah, so the Whetstone Bridge and the Arduino act like as the transducer. Next is the experiment. So these are the steps um, that we will be doing for our experiment. Um, first is the fabric coating. Yeah, we will have three versions. The uh, the first is the control where there is no HBN because we want to know whether uh, boron nitrate will really affect the sensitivity. Yeah, so there will be three versions. First, the control. Uh, second and third is the ones that have that has been explained before in the materials and fabrication section. So the thermistor will also be stitched on the fabric and the resistance will be measured using digital multimeter. And then uh, we will put the resistance uh, temperature versus resistance graph. And from there, we could evaluate the sensitivity. So the one with the best sensitivity will be used for the next step. Second is the electrodes. As I have also explained earlier, uh, we will also evaluate whether using electrode will affect the sensitivity or not. Yeah, um, we will also measure the resistance um, and the procedure will be the same like before. The best one will be used for the next step. And yeah, for the electrodes and the coating, we will not put it inside uh, the bolometer first. Next is um, evaluating the thermal isolator. As Andy has mentioned before, there will be two versions. So we will be testing which one, which one will also produce the better sensitivity. And the procedure will also be the same, but uh, at this time, the fabric will be placed inside the bolometer. Yeah, and then the best one will be used for um, yeah, for the next calibration. And then this is the calibration step after getting all the uh, materials that um, that could um, help in maximizing the results. Uh, I mean, producing the optimum results. Uh, we find the beta value, which will be crucial and also the reference resistance, which, which will be crucial for the calculation using the Arduino. And yeah, the, the fabric is placed inside the bolometer, but here the resistance is measured. So we didn't, uh, we will not connect it to the Arduino first because uh, we need to find the resistance here, the resistance Please. temperature Please. Versus Please. resistance. Just make it quicker because of time. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, we. Sorry, I forgot. Oh, oh um, yeah, we find the, res the reference resistance and temperature so that um, we could put it into this into this uh, kind of form and we could get the beta value and also the reference resistance. Next is the testing the fully assembled bolometer. Yeah, it is already connected. To, it will be connected to the Arduino and then the bolometer will be exposed to different temperatures. And then we will also evaluate the accuracy between the temperature um, reading in the hot plate. Uh, maybe we'll use the hot plate and then with the one displayed on the uh, Arduino, by the Arduino. So to conclude our, our presentation, uh, the R bolometer made by made of PLA plus with MWC and COOH based sensor, coated fabric and personal lens will be fabricated. As for the measurement will be done using with stone bridge and Arduino as transducer. 
sensitivity and accuracy of the sensor will be evaluated through a series of experiments. That's all from us. Um, is there any questions? Thank you. Okay, group one, group one, please ask questions. Angeli and as please be quick because we don't have much time. Um, first of all, I want to ask what is H H B N? I think. Oh, it's hexagonal boronitride. Oh. oh. Yeah, yeah, it's like the structure. So, so, um, so what is that? Can you um, explain it more? Uh, um, that? Yeah, basically, it's the structure. Uh, actually, I uh, don't really know. Kayak, uh, what on what detail? Detailnya kayak hexagonal tuh gimana ya? Yang oh, uh, so it's it's uh, it's just a structure of yeah. The hexagonal boronite, right? Oh, of the boronite. Yeah, that's the name. You okay, have okay. to read so it's the... detail, yeah, uh, group two, so that you know why oh, yeah. why they use HPN. They, they they have certain reason why the previous batch oh, use wow. HPN. They had that. Yeah. So you please read the underlying literature so yeah. that you can answer. Yeah. Ezra's questions in more detail. Not just it is not just a structure, it is material. Why is it used to coat the fabric? Oh. What the proposal? Oh. So you have you have to be able to explain. Oh, for the function itself is to absorb heat because yeah. Yeah, not, not just a function. What structure does it have such that it is best to function as absorber? Yeah, remember in biomaterial you have learned from structure, the property, functions, right? And processing the four, the four uh, lights. Use it, yeah? So even though this is for sensor and this subject, use all the other knowledge from other subjects as well. Okay, thank you. Other questions, please be quick. Um, I want to ask, for the electrode, is EG the only candidate you considered, or did you also consider other options? Yeah, because um, anything that is conductive, but but yeah, in uh, the previous studies, I think there are two papers that I have read. Um, they use EG electrodes, so we will be using um, we will be implementing the same thing. Uh, using EG electrode, yeah, for maybe a better result and more promising. Yeah, so yeah, same like here as well. You have to read why EG should be used, why EG should not be used, why the other materials are not used. What materials does EG have such that it is best to be used as electrode? Yeah, for example, yeah, so. Yeah, don't, don't just uh, copy paste what the previous batch have done, but you have to understand the underlying reason why they did that. If even if they did not explain it in their report, you have to dig deeper reading the literatures about that particular material. Okay. Understand? This is for both groups. Yeah. Even though now the, the example is for AG electric. Okay, so please read it in more detail uh, that we, you can explain it better yeah, in your report or well as in during the presentation. Okay, sir. Thank you. So if you are answering like that, I'm not, I'm not satisfied at all. If I were the one that is asking questions. Okay, you have to, you, you have to do better than that. Um, I have one, one short question. What about the Fresnel lens? Have you been able to obtain it? Uh, so, sorry, sir. Uh, what's the question? Fresnel lens. Oh, yeah. Have you been able to use it uh, to test it or to, to find out where you can have, you can, where you can acquire it? Um, Andy has ordered the Fresnel lens. Uh, Andy, maybe you could. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we found lots of 
store and we found uh, I think the fastest uh, the fastest day to so all of them we have to pre-order it and the fastest is uh, at uh, 10 days on 10 days yeah so we can we could uh, test the lens on the second week I think I mean okay. second uh, two weeks from now I think yeah what I still find lacking yeah, in your presentation is the detailed procedure on how you are going to do the calibration and the test. You mentioned about testing with temperatures, but how we are going to do that? By conduction or what the radiation, with what radiation? Yeah, you don't mention the details. Okay, and that details are important because these are the in the, the additional part which you should find out and put in your report as well as in your presentation, which is maybe still lacking also in the previous batch. They, in the previous batch, they haven't defined the method, methods carefully to test and calibrate their sensors. So what the previous group had done with this, with this project, which you find still lacking, you have to fill in that gap okay, and put more emphasis on that. That's what I mean, what, what my, my, my suggestion is. So for example, if you find SVN is already quite good, because now even it is not proven yet whether SVN is good or not. In the previous batch, they, they could not, there is no proof. It's just based on the previous literature as well. But after it is being used as a coating material for the carton, there is no proof yet. How do you prove that it's a good absorber? Uh, how to test it? What is the experimental procedure to, to test it? This is something which is still lacking in the process. So please revise it, write in more detail so that your report can, can be better yeah, than the details presented in this short presentation. Okay, clear? Okay. Okay, that will be all for today. Thank you and please fill in the first. The so online e attendance eighteen zero five one eight zero five. Next time, please make your presentations shorter, but really contentful. Yeah, don't 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 put too many words on unnecessary words. Just immediately go to the point. Go to the point and make more more clear illustration. Don't don't put too much wording in your presentation. Illustration schematics pictures of what you are planning to do or what the results and go to the point don't go blah 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 too long okay you have only 10 minutes for presentation that's all in normal conferences also 10 minutes don't go don't use 15 minutes just to explain unnecessarily but go to the point the technical points that's what i want to listen and hear is that clear for everyone and those asking questions also ask immediately questions don't wait too long I don't like uh, time is wasted on just waiting for you to ask questions. Okay, is it clear for both groups?